I know everyone is stuck at home, out of school, socially isolated, and just plain bored. These times are confusing, strange, and a little scary. My mission is to share with you some inspiring yogic tales of bravery, strength, and love, because that is how we will get through this. Hello, and welcome to the world's very first, wait for it, drum roll. Storytime with Kaya. Today, we will be reading the beginning of The Adventures of Rama by Milo Cleveland Beach. Ayodhya was the most beautiful city in all of India. Its wide streets were shaded by stately trees, houses were tall and spacious, and cool streams meandered through groves of mango and of trees that looked just like their name, Flame of the Forest. Peacocks roamed wild, and friendly monkeys raced through the overhead branches. It was an ideal, peaceful world, ruled by a wise and just king. Nevertheless, unhappiness and worry were in the air. The king, Dasratha, was an old man, and while he had several wives, he had no sons. In India at that time, only sons could inherit the kingdom and protect its people. Dasaratha knew that finally he would have to ask the gods for help, but he needed a wise counselor, a holy man who knew how to get the gods' attention. He talked with many people and learned of a hermit named Rishya Rishringa, a young man who lived all alone, deep in the forest. His house was a hut of branches and leaves that he himself had built. Except for his father, Rishiringa knew no human beings. Wild animals were his only friends. Because his life was so simple, he had never felt greed or jealousy. Instead, he spent his time thinking of the gods and wondering how the heavens could be better than life on earth. The gods had noticed Rishiringa and long ago had decided that he was a saint. They rewarded him with a special power. Wherever he moved, a gentle rain would fall invisibly, making plants greener and flowers more abundant. King Dasaratha was intrigued and wanted to know more. He learned that Rishiringa had recently come to a nearby kingdom, named Anga. The monsoon rains hadn't fallen on Anga this year, and there was little food for those who lived there. The king of Anga, who had also heard about the saint, had realized that Rishiringa could bring life to his dry and dying lands. The youth had not wanted to leave his home and his father, however, so the king of Anga had decided to play a trick. He chose the most beautiful woman in the land and sent him to Rish them to Rishiringa's forest hut dressed in sparkly jewels and thin silks. Rishiringa had been enchanted. He had never seen a woman before, and he willingly followed when they began to walk back to Anga. After hearing this story, King Dasaratha decided immediately to ask Rishiringa to help him get a message to the gods, for he was hoping that they would honor a request for his son. He went to Anga and persuaded him to come to a yogya. They arrived together, and the kingdom had already begun to prepare for great festivities, and a ceremony in which Rishiringa would ask the gods to help Dasaratha. This was a special occasion of such importance that it would last many days, and thousands of visitors, even from distant lands, would come. Special houses had to be built for kings and princes, while enormous decorated tents of silk and cotton were set up in the parks. Even stables had to be constructed, for the guests would arrive riding elephants, camels, and horses. Servants prepared cooked foods, cool drinks, and mounds of fresh fruit while musicians and dancers came, hoping for an invitation to perform. Luxury and comfort were provided for everyone, for by doing this, the town was also praising and honoring their most important guests, the gods who would be watching from the heavens. When the ceremony finally began, Dasaratha, surrounded by his wives and his advisors, was seated in a special pavilion, built from fragrant woods and painted by the finest artists. There were soft pillows to lean against, and flower garlands hung overhead. 
Nearby, Rishyashringa and other holy men chanted hymns and placed offerings of flowers, fruits, and grain, things which the people valued in a special ceremonial fire. Transformed into smoke, whatever was sacrificed rose to the heavens and was received by the gods. Far above the earth, the three great gods, Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer, sat quietly, looking down on Dasaratha's ceremony, as they did every time a sacrifice was made. They noticed whether the chants and prayers were performed correctly, whether the sacrifices were really valued by the people, or whether the minds of the holy men were wandering. They watched to see if Dasaratha provided they watched to see if Dasaratha provided lavishly for the comforts and needs of his guests, or if he were holding back his wealth and generosity. This ceremony seemed perfect, however. The gods were pleased and paid careful attention, at least until a group of lesser gods and immortals rushed in noisily and interrupted. They were upset at things happening elsewhere on earth. The demon Ravana was on a rampage again, they complained, destroying towns and crops, causing storms and droughts, and attacking sages and holy men to upset their prayers. It was through prayers and offerings made on earth that the gods drew their energy. Ravana was a gigantic monster. He had ten heads and twenty arms, and he rode in a magic chariot. His strength and its speed made him proud and arrogant. However, and none of the lesser divinities singly or even together could control him. They therefore begged the great gods for help. Vishnu immediately determined that if he were born on earth as a son of Dasaratha, he could defeat Ravana, but also reward the king by granting him the heir he wished for. Dasaratha, of course, knew nothing of this. To be continued. Thank you for watching everybody if you liked it please like this video if you loved it please love this video and let me know what you think in the comments below um yeah <laughs> i totally lost <laughs> see you for the next chapter okay i will see you for the next chapter oh yeah